welcome to my channel. Now, in this video, I'm gonna talk about hanging doors, or at least how I like to go about hanging doors right from the beginning, where you take a delivery of the doors and you've got to stack them, sort them, and all the rest of it. So I'm gonna keep it brief. I wanna just give you the headlines, but this is what we like to do when we're hanging doors out on site. So the first thing to do is get organized and make sure your site ready for your doors because too many people bring the materials on too early. And what that means is if you've still got a lot of wet trades in, screed drying, you've got plasterers in, even decorators, maybe they're spraying and that sort of stuff. And you bring all of those nice products in, those doors, and you stack them badly, they could go out of shape prior to even fitting them. So the first thing I'd like to say is always make sure you bring your doors into the project at the right point. So if you can store them somewhere dry, store them in association with the manufacturer as well. If they say they must be stacked flat, they don't just mean laid down, they mean stacked level and flat. So if you're gonna put them on two bearers, make sure the bearers aren't twisted like that because the chances are the doors will move as well. So storage is super important, making sure you keep all of the doors away from excess moisture as much as possible. So then what do we do? We always run a dehumidifier. We also monitor the humidity in our buildings as we're building. It's a simple thing that we do and there'll be a link in the description to the device that I use for that very purpose that you can just put in the building, attach your phone to it, and it will send you a report. It's not expensive. It will send you a report every time you walk past it. You know, it knows you're coming, it's Bluetooth. And that's a really useful thing to do to make sure you don't incorporate moisture into all of your nice joinery. So, here are the doors. I'm using an XL joinery door. I use a lot of XL joinery doors. They're very reliable. These are pre-finished in oak. So a lot of doors come in pre-finished, some even pre-painted, which means that when you're handling them right from the beginning, when you unwrap them from your level flat pile, check them. So the first thing you do is you check the door over before you even hang it and make sure it's got no damage or defects. And basically, if you've got a few in a room, put them together, look at the colors of them and say, okay, these two are pretty good. They match because being a natural material, then it's got a finish over the top. They will vary in color. Even the rails will vary in color from veneer to veneer. So that's the first thing. Look after your doors, make sure they're stored correctly and away from moisture. Then you're gonna select the door, you're gonna get it out, you're gonna unwrap it and you're gonna handle it with care. Make yourself a stand to support your door for while you're working on it or use something like this, which is, you know, this is actually designed for it. It's got very soft jaws that spring the door. It's nice and heavy. It holds them straight up and enables you to do some work on the door. And I can operate that with my foot, so I can lay the door down and operate it with my foot. Then what we need to do is obviously get our linings ready. So that means preparing the lining, we use some small blocks like this. Now these blocks, that I make, excuse the screw falling out. These blocks that I make represent the door's thickness or just a little bit more. And I use four of these and we basically mark from the edge of the lining. That's roughly the thickness of the door. Then we screw them on. We do that first. That enables us to offer the door into the opening to make sure to see if we've got to do anything on the head or shoot it in. Now we like to make our linings slightly bigger so we don't shoot anything off. Gone are the days where we'd put a leading edge on the hinge side. Now the hinges have a fair gap built into them, which mean you haven't got to shave off the pre-finished edge. So that's another thing as well. So we like to make sure we can get our door linings at the right height, that we haven't got to cut too much off the bottom or any. We also don't want to take anything off the side. So it's all about getting your linings right. So once we've screwed our blocks to the side, we then are ready. We've already done our hinge cutouts on the lining. So this is my simplified hinge jig. It's a clamp-on hinge jig. It's very easy to use because it just follows your marks. It's got a bearing guided router piece which will work in any small router, even a medium-sized router. That follows it round. It's super quick. 
But what I'd like to do, as I'm doing lots of these, is I take an offcut of timber, like this one here, and using my jig, I actually create a full height hinge jig. And that means I can race around the job, butt it up against the tops, screw it onto the linings, and do all of my door linings first. Then once I shoot my door in, I stand the door in, I mark off the hinge positions, here, here, and here, put it in the door stand, and then using the jig with the clamps, we clamp them on, we route them out, and then we're ready. And then in our case, we're working as a team of two. Instead of doing one door each, we work as a team of two. They are heavy doors, so it's good to have a pair of hands. And so in this case, Ed will follow me along as I've routed one out. He'll use his chisel just to remove the last little corners for the hinge. And then Ed was piloting them with these little centering bits and then screwing the hinges on. Now notice that we screw the hinges on, we start them off with a proper screwdriver. We just let them go through with a screwdriver, a battery screwdriver, then we finish them off by hand. A lot of the screws that you find even though they're chrome, they're not that hard. And as you drive them through the first skin of oak before you get into, say, the softwood core behind, because these are an engineered door, they get warm, they get hot, and they have a tendency to break or snap. So you really don't want to do that. You want to finish it off by hand and know that you're not putting too much force for it. So that is another important tip. So once you've got it to that stage, you've got your hinges in your door. The next step is obviously bring it in Put it on your airbags in the open position. Gently pump them up. I like to operate them with my feet. Just look at the side hinges. They're gonna clip in, and then you can attach them to the pre-piloted lining. And then you're, you're there. That's the door ready for its handles. So then, at that stage, we do our locks and handles. But we'd go round, we'd swing them all first to this position, um, and make sure that we've got a little block there to stop them swinging right through the lining and cranking the hinges. We then go around putting our locks and latches in. So, because we've got quite a lot to do on this job and they're pre-finished doors. So what I don't like to see personally is when you see pencil marks all the way around them because they're awfully hard to get off sometimes. So what I've done is made a really simple jig, a lock and latch jig. So this represents the latches, this represents the bathroom locks, and it's a matter of slotting it over the door in the right position. These handles are going exactly central of the door. So this would go over. We'd clamp it on here. We'd use the router. That would route out the fore end to the latch. We'd then pilot through the sides. That would give us our spindle position. Then we'd whip it off. We'd just gently take that off there. Bore down our 20 two millimeter or 25 millimeter, whatever size you're using hole for our latch. Latches in, handles on. And then on the lining as well, we've also got this, which represents the keep for the latch and also the keep for the bathroom lock. And that's again, this is the edge of the lining, that reference there. So I would position it straight on the side of the lining, use the little router, that will take out the profile that I need. Then I'll use a 15 mil drill, bore out the mortise inside for the keep and the lock. And that's that as well. And it's super quick. Let's say I took two hours even to make something like this, maybe a bit less. But let's say you spent two hours making this it takes minutes to then put in the mortise locks and the latches. And all of the next XL joinery jobs I do have got the same handle and latch sets. So regardless of whether they're chrome, satin chrome, black, they've always got the same configuration of hinges, which is a 76 mil ball race hinge. It's a latch, the depth you choose. And basically, away you go. So 
there will be a proper production one of these that I'm going to be making to suit the most common locks and latches. And it's very similar to my MDF hinge jig. This is a solid aluminium version of it. This is actually a prototype, it's one of a kind that I'm trying out at the moment. So this doesn't need much fine tuning. Got a couple of things I want to do to it. But that's something to look forward as well. So we're at the stage now where you need to fit the door stops. Now the door stops are the bit that holds the door in the lining. Now we only fit them, I like to fit them once the lock and latch is in because it's a one person job then. I can pull the door to, click it on the latch, and then I go around with the, the stops. Now we cut the stops to lengths. We've primed and knotted our stops as well. So when they go in, they're not in the white as it were, in the bare timber. They're just ready to, ready to go. So I like to use a thick credit card, not a really thin one like the new ones, but I like to use a thick credit card, maybe with the embossed name on because it gives you just the right amount of paint gap that you need between the door face and the door stop. So how we do that is we latch it shut. The first one I put in is the head obviously, and I make sure that it's not pushing the door out at all. Then I like to put in the closing side here, where the latch is, and then I simply put the last one in, but that's the best way of going about that. So then we go around doing all of those as well, and then you're ready for your architrave. But it's at that point of the job, because these are pre-finished and there's decorating to the frames to do, we then remove all the doors and we stack them again prior to putting the handles on. That's the very last job that will happen once the decorating is finished. We'll come up and we'll go around and put the handles on. You can put them on at this stage and take them off, but I personally think you want to pilot them and fit them and fix them one set at a time just so you don't muddle up the screws in case one seemed to screw better with a screw than the other one if you know what I mean. It's best to have a set per door. So that's basically how we like to go about hanging doors out on site. It's all about being organized. It's all about having the right tools and if you don't want to make yourself a jig like this or like this or use a hinge jig like that you must have super sharp chisels because it's pre-finished. In this case, it's oak. It is a hard material and you need to make sure that you mark it out properly, chop them in properly and take your time. Don't expect to be flying through all of these really quickly. Let's say I've got 11 doors to do between Ed and I. Once we're all set up and we've got everything ready, we should be able to go and swing all of those 11 doors in one go, in one process up to the stage where we then put the locks on. And then it's just a matter of going around and gently popping the jig on, clamping it on and doing the locks. Now a little tip, if you're using a jig like this, it's a combi jig, I'll call it a combi jig, so it's got the lock and the latch. It's very easy as human beings to make a mistake. So for example, I'm only gonna be doing latches at the moment, so I'm gonna take some masking tape and literally tape it across there. So I know for a fact it's not the lock that I'm gonna be doing. What I don't wanna do is put it on the door, get disrupted, to, uh, go away, come back, have a cup of tea, put this on and then accidentally route out for the lock, which is gonna be in the wrong position. So that's uh, a little tip there, is just pop a bit of masking tape over or something like that to make sure we don't make an error. And if you do make an error, then you have to splice it in, polish it back, and that will take you as long to do that as it will to probably hang three doors. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, take your time, make sure you read the manufacturer's instructions about how to store, stack, handle, select, and most of all, make sure your frames and your linings are in good shape. You always got a little bit of tolerance if the architrave isn't on as well. This is a, um, something else to ease the leg in and out. So ours are screwed. So for example, we can ease these screws out, we can ease it away, put a shim behind, architrave on, and it's a really, really nice bit of adjustment because these linings already come pre-trenched. They've determined the width of the legs and they are bigger than the doors now. They used to be the same size as the doors and we'd always have to cut the edge off with a plane. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.